Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey, and on this episode of Redefine Show for Adorama TV, I speak with Pulitzer Prize winning photojournalist Deanne Fitzmorris about the distinct decisions she made throughout her career that led to the standout success she's enjoying and why she followed this painful, extraordinary story for 13 years. Check it out. Viewers are advised the following episode contains upsetting and disturbing imagery, including scenes of war aftermath, suffering and distress. Hello, how are you? Good, how you doing? Good, thank you for taking the time um, to join me in this 3D room. I love it. There's, do you see all the way back there? It's great. <laughs> I like the way you're resourceful with thank your you. studio Thank setup. you, we try. Um, so I'd love to talk to you about your extraordinary career, um, specifically some of the projects that you are so passionate about and that you've worked on much longer term than most people would expect. Um, would you like to share some of that? Yes. Um, so it's a story I started in 2003, mm -hmm. a story about an Iraqi boy who was blown up by a bomb. Mm -hmm. He picked up what he thought was a ball, turned out to be a bomb, blew up, killed his older brother, who was 16, Salah, who was 9. Um, his hands were blown off and he lost an eye, his abdomen was blown open. and. His father refused to let him die mm -hmm. and brought him to an Iraqi hospital and they said we can stabilize him but we can't save him. Your only hope is to go to the Americans. Through this incredible circumstance they were able to bring him to America, military transport and that's where I picked up the story in a California hospital. When you say you picked up the story. Yep. So I was a staff photographer at the San Francisco Chronicle at the time, and my editors came back and said, hey, Deanne, we have a story. We want you to go out and photograph this Iraqi boy. And I thought it was going to be a one-day story. Yeah. Here I am, 13 years <laughs> yeah. later, yeah. still following the story. So I just started documenting his recovery. We thought he would return to Iraq, but it was unsafe to return mm. because insurgents had ransacked the family home thinking that his dad was an American spy, and that's why he had been given treatment in America. Oh, okay. So they weren't able to return. Right. They settled in America, they were granted asylum, and then they brought the family over. Wow. And what kept you returning to the story? Oh, boy. Well, I had originally documented the story. Originally, it was going to be one day. Mm -hmm. Then it was going to be six weeks because we thought he was going to be at this hospital in Oakland for six weeks until he was um, you know, well enough to go back to Iraq. Right. But then that changed. And so I continued following as they adjusted to life in America. I ended up going to Iraq to come back with the family for mm. the reunion. Wow. So at first I was just documenting it. It was a story for the paper and right. it came out as a three part series and then that helped them gain asylum. And then the project was awarded the Pulitzer for the photography in 2005. Okay. And I and at that point, I mean, that could have been an ending point for me, right. but I just have not been able to shake the story. I can't let it go. Salah is such an incredible person. He's got a great heart. He, and I think that's why he was saved. Mm. They named him, nicknamed him Lionheart because he refused to die. Brilliant. So um, he's just got this great heart, cares about everyone around him, and you know, um, cares so much about his family and his siblings. And so I've just wanted to document his journey. Um, one of the big reasons is because it was a story about war that we weren't seeing. Right. And the impact of following the story for 13 years has so much power. Watching him grow up. Mm -hmm. He was nine when I started. He's right. 22 now. Crazy. And That's a dramatic so shift. It is. It mm -hmm. is. And so I think it resonates a lot now on so many levels. You know, we think about the Syrian refugees escaping war and coming to America. And so it's really a story of war. It's a story of survival. And, and the innocent that are dragged yes, through it. Yes, yeah. exactly. And yeah. and we were talking the other um, uh, the other night at the um, Jay Maisel yes. uh, retrospective yeah. about um, how one of the things that you have to struggle with is the code of photojournalism and your yeah. own desire to make to help to step yes, in and help exactly. And that's been a difficult thing as a photojournalist because we are taught you're an objective observer. Don't get involved. Don't change the situation. Um, you know, and it's about credibility, and it makes sense. Yeah. 
But after working on a story like this for so long, there are so many things that happen along the way where you want to get involved and you want to help. You want to, I mean, there are times when Salah's on the ground sobbing mm -hmm. and, you know, you want to hug him, but as a photojournalist, you need to stand back and capture that moment right. so that it can have further impact. But I ran into some um, real ethical decisions that I had to make when he finally last year said that he wants hands and his family didn't have the resources and I thought okay I could probably do a Kickstarter raise some money and help right but then I felt like okay I'm getting involved I'm changing the story and I said well you know if there's a chance for him to get hands I'll step in I'll stop working on the story whatever I have to do to right. help but it resolved itself the hospital came forward and um, and helped him get prosthetics so there he has hands. Yeah. But you found yourself struggling with that. Absolutely. You know, what do I do? Um, you know, it's because everything I've been taught, you know, the core of my being as a photojournalist is you respect the ethics of journalism and you don't change the story. Yeah. But then here I am. Okay, I can affect this. I can help Salah get hands. Right. Right. Yeah. So what do you do? Yeah, you're going to help yeah. them, right? Yeah. And I'm working on it on my own now. It's a personal project. I'm not working with any specific publication. So what's next on the horizon for you? What are you looking at next for your uh, additional passion project? Okay. All right, the thing I'm really excited about now, my 13-year project, mm -hmm. I want to go forward and make it some kind of a documentary film. Oh, fabulous. Because I have been recording Salah's voice over the years. I have been um, rolling video on him as he has grown up throughout the years. And I want to continue with that, interviewing Salah and his dad and his doctors, and just put it together in some kind of a documentary film. And it's so, um, uh, sadly, it's never not been timely, but it's so timely right now yeah. in terms of, you know, not just that conflict, but all the, yeah. all the new conflict that, exactly. that is, you know, registering in the world, right, too. Right, right. And just to humanize this, yes. this family who yeah. has been so impacted, their life was kind of blown apart. Yeah. That's and, amazing. Yeah. That would be very cool. Yeah, so that's what I'm excited about now, but it's a daunting task and yeah. a big project to take on. And, and so, again, what you're going to do is do it yourself. Yeah? I think so. You know, um, I've I'm talked sure you'll about, have people want to jump on board. But. Yeah, yeah. You know, and um, sometimes it's really great if you can bring on an editor who's really experienced in this type of thing. Right. But in some ways, I would love to just tackle it myself. And, yeah. You know, figure out how to put this together. I'm um, putting together a documentary film is so different than um, a set of images. Yeah. And, you have know, you done that before? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have done some. Okay. Um, I went. I worked with Media Storm on a project in 2010, and um, yeah. So there are some great editors that are really experienced in this type of thing and understand the nuances of, you know, just. When do you reveal what? Right. When you put right. it together yeah. a documentary. Yeah. Film. Creating, and it's, it's different. Yep. It's a different way of thinking than still images. Yeah. And then what do you think you'll do with it once it's produced? What I would like to do is I would just like to get the story out there. I would like to see as many people as possible see it and be impacted by it and care about it. Care yeah. about Salah and his family. And think about war and, you know, what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right? Well, where can people go to find out more about you? Um, let's see. I'm on Instagram, Deanne Fitzmaurice. Um, Twitter, Deanne underscore Fitz. Um, I'm on Facebook. Um, my website, we have um, a think tank. <laughs> like everywhere. <laughs> you can go everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank yeah. you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. It's been great talking with you. Thank you so much, Deanne, for sharing that extraordinary work. Check us out here next time on Adorama TV, and don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV.